Warning, the podcast you're about to hear has a unique, conservative perspective and may be politically incorrect, containing some controversy in its message. This episode may speak out against liberalism, socialism, the dark state, and religious organizations. It is possible that evil in politics, education, law, society, and religion will be discussed and exposed. However, we believe this podcast adds truth and value to a mature, disenfranchised audience who may be tired of apostate religions and wicked world systems. Listeners who are easily offended, overly sensitive, or have progressive leanings sympathetic to the topics we expose should be forewarned not to listen any further. We thank both those who choose to listen as well as those who choose not to listen. You've been warned. And now, let us get on with the show. Well, hello, Ms. Kapow. Hi, Brother Kapow. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm Good. blessed. Yes, you I, are. I am. I am. Even though we live in a world surrounded by complete idiots. Idiots. Yes, morons. And you know, when I say we, I don't mean just you and I, Ms. Kapow. I mean the, the listeners. Mm-hmm. Because if you're listening to Kapow Radio Show, not because we know everything there is to know. Obviously. But if you're listening to the Kapow Radio Show, Freedom Friday, and the Kapow Radio Show, the biblical stuff that we do on Mondays, the exposing the evil that we do on Fridays, it's like, it's of the Lord, you know, it's of God, and it's like godly wisdom, and it shows you all around, around you is just this evil satanic cult that is is falling apart. It can't sustain itself, you know. Even the Bible says control. It's losing control. It is. And the Bible says God mocks. He laughs at their calamity. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to us, if you're listening to shows like us, biblical shows, they're showing this, you know, you're awake. You're awake in this matrix. You're not asleep. And because you're awake, you are surrounded by people who are asleep and they're just bumping into walls and they're stumbling around on their Facebook pages and looking at their phones and and they're just complete morons, you know, just uh, this football season. And man, that's all they talk about Mm -hmm. is just trivial nonsense. And you can't convince them. Otherwise you can't get into like a deep conversation about what's going on in the world or, um, you know, all this climate chaos. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, they don't see it. No, they don't see it. You know, I mean, it's, they might see something is wrong politically, or they might see that there's some lies, or, you know, they just, you know, a lot of people, you know, I talk to say, well, they don't watch news anymore, you know, and you don't blame them, mm-hmm. you know, it all the lies. To watch. But, uh, but, but instead of like searching for truth or looking for truthful answers or, you know, looking into the spiritual, you know, they just, they do other things, you know. With, they find other ways to escape. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Everybody's high. Around here, everybody's high on oh, marijuana. Lord. Everybody's taking cannabal. <laughs> I know. They're cannibals it's... taking cannabal. And they don't realize that they sound stupid. I know. Because you can talk to them like... I mean, you uh, can't understand anything they're saying. Uh-uh, they they're make rambling no sense. about stuff, and it doesn't make sense, and... Uh. And they're high, and they, they, they started getting high at 9 o'clock in the morning. Because it's legal, it's now okay, and now it's right. It's morally right. Mm-hmm. So you it's know, okay. They get behind the wheel, they drive around. It's crazy. It but is. outside of that, I can't complain. <laughs> So today, Ms. Cabal, we're going to talk about, well, the first thing I want to talk about is this really weird hole in the ground. Yeah. It's something that uh, I just discovered. I didn't discover it personally. I discovered it on the intranet. And, um, but it's not on any of the news sources. Why is that? Why is that? It just doesn't make regular news. I, I just, it's, this is some more strange stuff. This weird hole in the ground that's spitting fire out, was spitting fire out. Um, and the fire chief of this uh, town was even there going, huh? right? 
Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is this uh, robotic dog. You know, I told you, you know, oh, um, yeah. all these men are getting sex bots and everything like that. And I wanted a robo dog. Um, I was just kidding. I don't want one. But see, they heard you. <laughs> they did hear me. So Sony has invented um, Ebo, a robot dog. And we're going to talk about just how evil this thing is. Not the not the the, the, the robot itself, the creators of it. Uh, the what intent it, behind the it. The intent behind it. It's just like... Uh, Alexa or Siri, um, you know, all those those personal assistant stuff that listen to you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And it learns from you and you get to ask it stupid questions and it answers you. And then this one just really ticked me off. <coughs> Bert and Ernie from uh, Sesame Street. They're gay. They're gay. Uh, says says the creator, the writer of Bert and Ernie. Who's gay? Yeah, well, yeah. He's a... He's a major fag a lot and what's irritating is that it's like they keep constantly pushing this unnatural demonic sick i mean another man with another man another one with a woman this it's just not it's unnatural sick and they keep pushing this agenda Constantly, mm-hmm. constantly, constantly, constantly. Well, that's, yeah, that's what's really annoying. That's what's annoying. And then the thing is, is that th- this guy's been writing for Sesame Street, uh, you know, children's shows for years. And now he comes out and says, yeah, yeah, they were gay the whole time. Um, It just really ticks me off. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, years ago, 100 years ago, not even 100 years ago, maybe even back in the 50s and 60s. This guy, Saltzman, who created this, would have, been, would have been taken out and strung up. Mm-hmm. Would have been destroyed by parents um, that had morals and decency and common sense, which don't exist today. No. Don't exist today. We live in a whole different realm. Mm-hmm. A whole different realm. We're surrounded by demonic idiots that have no decency, no civility. They have no common sense at all. And they have no wisdom. Mm-mm. No, because now... Most of the mothers, you know, that uh, even allow their kids to do the, um, what is it called, drag queen par- uh, oh, yeah. library reading. Yeah. You know, a lot of them say they want their children exposed to different things. Complete idiots. Mm-hmm. Morons. Unbelievable. Speaking of morons, we're going to talk about this guy named Post Malone. I guess that's how you spell his name. I think it's Maloney, like baloney. He's some kind of rapper or something. The guy is totally satanic. Oh, yeah. man, the pictures of this dude, he's totally sold out to Satan. And that's why he's uh, got fame, right? I mean, that's why he's got, you know, they could, if you don't accept the mark of the beast, you're not going to buy or sell. Don't think, well, I went to Walmart and just bought some bread. That's not true. No, I'm talking about buy or sell on a big level. I'm talking about millions of dollars. A lot of fame, a lot of fortune, a lot of influence on society. Satan owns that. He's not going to allow you to have that unless you bow down and worship him. It's the same thing he tried to do to Christ in Matthew 4. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. It's a fact. I'm not making it up. It's a fact. People get to these levels. It's because they sold out. Don't ever think they haven't sold out. Mm -mm. And some are worse than others. It depends on the agenda that they're called to do. So Post Malone's one of these guys that's just a total satanic freak. Yeah. And we're going to talk about his stupid uh, bad luck he's had recently, and they're blaming it because he's uh, he, he touched or messed with the most haunted object on the planet. Something to do with demons. It's, it's a stupid article, but this one, but it's about stupid people. So it's, we need so to talk about it. perfect. Yeah, and the last story is about these uh, two teenage uh, gals, supposedly A students in Michigan. You sound like you don't believe it. Well, yeah, because I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking at their school, in order to get an A, you probably need to show up and not stab your teacher. Yeah, that's what makes an A student. So basically, in Michigan. Your standards are really low. Yes, yeah. My dog could go to this school mm-hmm. and be Vela Victorian, right? Mm-hmm. You know, she just lay there, you know. Yeah, it's like you said, as long as they show up for class. Yeah, and don't and don't kill their teacher. I think they're okay. When we talk about these two uh, Vela Victorians who uh, who had a little scuffle and ended kind of bad. Um, crazy, crazy. Just the, just the, the, the descent is amazing. 
amazing. Ms. Kapow, do you have some truth? Because once we start talking about all these these stories, there's no truth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not that the stories aren't true, but there's no truth in it. Yeah. Yeah. So Psalm 82. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations." Now, folks, that's a that's an outstanding scripture. And if you're not aware of that, that scripture is talking about the fallen ones who run this, this planet, who run society. Mm-hmm. God's addressing the kings of the earth. He's addressing the powers and the principalities of the air. He's addressing the, the satanic kingdom, those watchers over this planet, those blinky lights in the sky, those orbs in the sky, that fireball in the sky. The Bible says, are not the, even the, the, his his angels flaming fire, flaming ministers of fire? Mm. Is not Satan, isn't the, Satan himself um, uh, pose himself as a uh, an angel, angel of light? light? You know, they're not from outer space. You know that they're all around us. It's this is their this is their gig. This is their domain. We're the ones that are in a prison planet. We're the ones passing this probation to see if we can get awake. You know, and get to the truth so that we can prove ourselves. This is the testing, the proving ground before we're allowed to have eternal life. You mm-hmm. think God's going to have a bunch of idiots up in heaven with him? He's been there, done that. He's not going to do it again. Mm-hmm. He's done with idiots. This is our chance. This is our time right now not to be an idiot. So this scripture is talking about the fallen ones. That's who he's talking about. He's talking about the kings of the earth, the fallen ones. And he's, and he's saying... How long are you going to be doing this, doing injustice, being an idiot, Mm -hmm. you know, deceiving people? You know, there's a time comes where I'm going to pull the plug on you idiots and you're going to be judged Mm -hmm. and they're going to be judged because there's a whole lake of fire that burns for perpetual eternity that was prepared for them. Mm -hmm. And it was never prepared for humans, never prepared for humans, but a bunch of humans are going to go there. They're going to go there because... They're hitching to the wrong wagon yeah. constantly, constantly brain dead, brain damaged. Yep. Oh, first story, Miss Kapow. First story. This is from the uh, Springfield News, and this happened in a... Uh, a city or a town in Arkansas, 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 all places. I know a fire chief finds flames shooting from a hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. Now, when Obama was president, when he was a president, I saw flames shooting from his hole and it scared me. I can't talk about it. No, I've been constipated ever since. The fire chief finds flames. I had to get political because CNN always talks bad about uh, the current president. So Kapow Radio could talk bad about past presidents. And uh, correct me, Ms. Kapow. Help me. (laughs) Roll me in. Continue with the story. Okay. There's this flame. Flames shooting from the hole in the ground. Was it a meteorite? Was it space junk? Was it other? Yeah, space junk. Really? Lanterns. Chinese lanterns. Yeah, Chinese lanterns. Hey, go on our Facebook page if you're too lazy to look it up because it's on our Facebook page, Fifth Hook Media. You can see the article there and you can see pictures of this hole. It's about the size of a, a basketball or a, a soccer ball. It's huge. It's it's a big hole. It's a big hole. Um, and burnt fire mark all around it, which is, which is really weird. But it's not like something hit it and then there's dirt that flew all over the place Mm-mm. or it's caved in like something came from the sky or blown out. Mm-mm. Very strange. Per, you know, my personal crazy conspiracy theory, I think it's the same stuff 
the same fallen angel technology that's sending the the fire beams blowing up houses and creating havoc and fire um all these california fires and all this stuff mm-hmm. uh you know they could call them laser you know concentrated fire but i think i think it's from i think it's from those guys mm-hmm. and just last week they had correct me if i'm wrong Mr. about 80 houses yeah caught on fire and uh the last i heard it was 80 yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. where was that at Started with an M. I don't know if it was Massachusetts or Minnesota or Manasseh or I don't know, but somewhere, somewhere, somewhere far from me, eighty homes caught on fire, and of course they uh, they 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 blamed the gas department, saying that the pressure was higher than it should have been, and blah blah blah. You know, what I mean, eighty homes, no one died in that. I, don't th- I think one person died. Yeah. Um, they bumped their head or something trying to get out, I, but. It's unbelievable there wasn't a bunch of deaths in that. 80 homes just blew up across two or three cities. Crazy. It's like concentrated. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, this reminds me of that. Like that weapon that they're using, whatever, just hit this. Instead of hitting a home, it hit a field. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's just a message. I don't know. But here's what the fire chief said. His name is Dog Tucker. He arrived at the scene early Monday morning, and then the 9-11 caller had, had reported it exactly how he, how he saw it. Here's what he says. He said, when I got there, there were flames. Check this out, folks. Eight or nine feet high. Wow. Is that a lot of flame? Yeah. That's above the average man by far. Flames, eight or nine feet high, shooting out of a hole which was about two feet in diameter. And, oh, Midway, Arkansas is where this at, is at this at. And um, he's the fire chief there. And he said it burned that way for 30 to 45 minutes before it went out. 30 to 45 minutes. That's a long time. So you have to ask yourself, (laughs) where was it getting its fuel? Mm -hmm. It is a long time. It's a long time. But for it to shoot that kind of flame that long, there has to be fuel, right? Mm -hmm. Gas? Methane, there has to be some fuel. So a closer look showed that there was a scorched rim and a hole about three and a half feet deep that uh, the fire chief said made a sharp 45 degree turn at the bottom. So who knows where how, how, where it goes? Mm-hmm. I say we get um, some crazy crackheads or somebody on Flacca, send them down in the hole to check it out with a camera on their head. There you go. I make good use of those, uh, their, their, those, that, those people and their energy. So he takes a temperature reading of the of the hole, and it shows seven hundred and eighty degrees That's inside the hole. Hot. How many chickens can you cook Eholy. there? Lots. Wow, seven hundred eighty degrees. He says, "What caused it?" He has no idea. Yeah, because there were no gas lines nearby. No gas lines. Or no smell of natural gas. Uh huh. <laughs> so it's not man-made. It's not a utility. My goodness. Um, Now, the fire chief, now he's just a fire chief. He's not anything else, but he didn't think it was caused by a meteor. And I'd have to agree with him. I mean, a meteor, you would would have an impact site. Mm -hmm. Uh, He says there's no strike. There's no sign of a strike. There's no splash dirt around the edge. Uh, It happened on private uh, property right on the edge of town. Yeah, real early in the morning, too. About 4.15 in the morning. So no one knows where it's at. They did call the um, the gas company and the gas company came out and, you know, they just sent a technician out and they said, we don't even have gas lines anywhere near here. So who knows, folks? What's going on? We don't know. Um, it remains a mystery. It remains a mystery. So some, oh, this one guy says um, that it, to me, to him, it smelled like burned plastic. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, some people said there was no reports of lightning. I don't think lightning <laughs> lightning doesn't create a big hole on somebody's lawn. <laughs> mm-hmm. With flames that shoot for 45 minutes, nine feet in the air. Well. It's just a, so what was it, Miss Kapow? I don't know. I think it's one of those strange biblical 
signs on the earth. Definitely. They're all around us, folks. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere. How about Hurricane Florence? Just just cruising over there and just hanging out for two or three days. What's the word you hear all the time? Unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Never before. Do you know, folks, that 80, about 80% of Canada is going to be under snow like by the end of the week? I know. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> snow. They they said that uh, it's, I think it's in Alberta. It's the snowiest September ever on mm-hmm. record. Mm-hmm. The floods there in Carolina are, are breaking all records. Records. Everywhere. Yeah. Unprecedented. That's the word. It's all coming down. There's volcanoes erupting. Uh, the earth is shaking. The ring of fire is going to blow any day. It's, it's, dude, I have a bad feeling that this winter is going to be really, really harsh. Mm-hmm. Really, really bad. Sheesh, there was tornadoes on, uh, on the news uh, in uh, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio. All right. Story number two. Story number two. Ebo, Ebo the robot dog, will melt your heart with mechanical precision. Yeah. It will not. The Only thing the doesn't even have ones. fur. Have you seen this thing, Miss Capel? I've seen it. I'm looking at it right now. And you know I love dogs. But yeah. this thing, nah. All it looks like is a plastic toy. Looks like uh, a metal toy. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It is metal. It's about the size of a Yorkshire Terrier. And it costs $2,900. Oh, boy. And it's going on sale this week in the United States of America. $2,900. Three grand for a toy named Ebo. It doesn't have fur. How can Mm -hmm. you, how can you, how can you just like cuddle something without the fur? You got to have a fur baby. That's why they're fur babies. My goodness. Stupid. Uh, so this writer, this writer uh, got sent one to try one out. And he says, I've been giving a robot belly rub. He scolded it for being a bad boy. Really? You scolded a robot dog? And he's grinned when it greets me at the door. Now, I'm sure that it's uh, it doesn't have a gender. It, apparently, it hikes its leg to pretend to go pee. So that would be a male, and that that's going to get them in trouble. Because mm-hmm. what about a shit squat? <laughs> so the writer goes on to say, what's this feeling? Oh, yes, it's puppy love. And he felt it for Abo, a new anonymous, autonomous companion dog, which was made by Sony. Hmm. Um. He says uh, Ebo offers early evidence that... Oh, it's uh, Ibo. Ibo. It's pronounced yeah. Ibo. Ibo. We're going to love robots. Uh, it's, a ro- it's a reboot of the robot dog Sony first introduced in 1999. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Mm-mm. And they laid it to rest in 2006 in a tragic round of corporate cost cutting. Or maybe because just no one was interested back then. The world has changed since uh, the beginning of 2018, you know. It's it's really different. It's it's unprecedented where the in 2018 what we're living in. Everywhere. Everywhere. Uh so they're going to sell this thing they they call it a litter. See, they're trying to really see how they're trying to make it, you know, real. There's mm-hmm. much more to this story. I'm going to get to it. It's more than just I think it's a stupid yeah, thing. It's very there's sinister. there's more to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, it goes on sale this week. It has lifelike movement, artificial intelligence. Write mm-hmm. that one down. It has artificial intelligence, folks. It has a cell connection, a cellular connection. Um, and if you're looking for uh, that kind of a justification to spend on such a toy, the American Kennel Club says the average lifetime of a real dog costs about twenty three grand. Yeah, so twenty nine hundred <clears throat> is nothing. It's nothing. Uh, robot dogs don't poop. Which I think is a shame because I actually enjoy picking up poop um, from my puppies. It's it's a time I can get outside and smell the fresh air. Ibo 
It's about the size of a Yorkshire t- Terrier, right? It could replace a, an actual dog. Really? I don't think so. Really? Uh, but this guy says uh, he let his play with a real seven-week-old pup. Mm. And it was reminded of all the ways Ebo, Ibo, I'm sorry, is just a fraction of the real thing. Ibo can't go for a walk. He can't jump on your lap. He can't teach responsibility. And he can't give you real love licks. <laughs> Aside from walking around the house, barking and performing a few tricks... Who I don't want I don't want my real dogs barking for no reason. Why would I want a robot dog barking? I know. Ibo doesn't do a whole lot. He can't play music or answer trivia like a smart speaker. Oh gosh. This guy's an idiot. Okay. Mm-hmm. So anyway. But despite all his limitations, this writer fell in love with it. After uh, two weeks of having Aww. uh <laughs> the, yeah. Out of the robot in his house, he he went gaga over it. Uh, he no. He, this is important. He says the Amazon Echo and the Google Home speakers. He he missed Alexa too. But anyway, uh, got us to open our homes to new ways to interact with computers. That's what I told you. Don't put those things in your house. Mm-hmm. Don't put them. Like, ah, people do. Th- ah. Ebo offers a glimpse of how tech companies will get us. To treat them more like members of the family. That's what they want. Exactly. That's what they want. They want it to be human. It's a Trojan horse. It's a Trojan horse. You think it's a gift. People allow these things in their home. And then. Pops. Out pops all the evil. Uh, Affectionate robots have the potential to comfort. No, they don't. Teach and connect us to new experiences. No, they don't. Mm-mm. As well as manipulate us in ways we've not quite encountered before. That's probably true. Um, Ebo works in part because real robots are catching up with what we've been trained by Pixar movies to find adorable. Isn't mm-hmm. that something? There's mm-hmm. a lot to this article if you really read between the lines. Right, right, right. What right. this guy is saying that Pixar movies have, have trained us to find these little robots, this, this artificial intelligence as adorable. Mm-hmm. You see, it's... It's what they call programming. That's right. We've been programmed for years to, to come up to this time of the Antichristos mm-hmm. zeitgeist. Yep. For years. Uh, this robot, this little dog robot has 22 joints, including one bouncy tail. It has two perky ears. Oh, an OLED Screen eyes communicate joy, sorrow, boredom, or the need for a nap. Really? If you tell the little dog, bang, bang, it'll lay down, flip over, and play dead. If you say, bring me the bone, it'll find a little special pink toy it has. It'll pick it up with its mouth. Uh, It'll even lift its back leg and take a simulated tinkle. Um, It has touch sensors on its back, head, and chin. It responds when you pet or scold it. I don't know why you would scold it. Um, it says the only thing that ruins it is that it's it's uh, very noisy. It yeah. sounds like a baby Terminator on the march. Hmm. Okay. Now, here's, here's, here's the whole thing. Here's the whole crux of this article. Mm-hmm. It is an animatronic puppet. There's cameras built into its nose and lower back. So it can watch you. Yes. And it wanders around your house like a Roomba. Um, it, uh, it wanders around your house. It uh, avoids obstacles. It can find its way back to its charger. <laughs> and it has four microphones uh, so that it could hear. It can hear commands, they say. And it figures out who's issuing them. So, so its microphones are listening to you. And it knows the difference between Brother Kapow and Miss Kapow. Right? Mm-hmm. That's weird. Just like a real puppy, it has an inconvenient habit of getting underfoot while you're cooking dinner. All right. Okay? So now you know it has cameras and it has microphones on it. And you let it in the house because you think it's a cute puppy. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Sony says the idea behind Ibo is that it's constantly growing. Oh, oh. 
it learns the faces of people who interact. Can you say facial recognition? How many facial of you can say facial recognition? Yes. Facial recognition. Yes. Is that good for you? No. Is that good technology for no. us? Well, Ebo's going to learn your face and it can interact with it, develop personal relationships. Sony says that no two Ebos have the same personality. You know why? Because artificial intelligence is shaped by experiences. Ooh. Oh, if you give belly rubs and good boy to your robot, you'll get more loving machine. Oh, really? Yes. Um, Ebo isn't smart enough to avoid steps or chase after a ball. He says sometimes he found it staring at a wall for hours. But it works just often enough that it's cute. You get the feeling your robo pup might actually be growing up. See, this is all like ground level stuff. Mm-hmm. You wait. Yeah. Yep, if we yep, last yep. that long. Yeah, it won't be dogs. It'll be children. Mm-hmm. Babies. Oh, yeah. You know, sex spots are already here. Mm-hmm. You can interact with eyeball, uh, eyeball, Ibo through touch and voice command, just like a dog. Uh, you can get an, a companion app, blah, blah, blah. Now, here's the deal, Ms. Powell. Mm. This robot is always online. Mm-hmm. It has its own cellular connection. And you know why? Because it downloads new capabilities and new tricks. And, but here's the rub. It uploads what it takes in on the ground. Dun, 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 dun. dun, 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 dun. It's a Trojan horse. It's a spy in your house. And people, because they think it's cute and it's technology, will put this thing in their home. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you imagine that? Now, check this out. Um, the privacy policy, Ebo's privacy policy says it isn't intended for use in Illinois, <laughs> which has laws restricting facial recognition tech. What does that tell you? It, wow. If there's laws that restrict facial recognition, they, they, this this toy can't be put in your house. What does that tell you? That means it recognizes your face. Yeah. Wow. It's scary. Uh, the, 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 the robot also stores experiential or, yeah, experiential data so it can build memories and create an ever, ever growing bond with the owner. Mm-hmm. This data is not shared. That's a spokes hole for yeah, Sony. Yeah, well, that right there is a lie, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, come on. You know, really? So, there you have it. See, they're putting all this stuff in our in everything. Yeah. Just about clothing and... You know, there, there's, there's so much in that article, though. You know, because it's written very flippant and, hey, you know, the little I fell well, in love with sure. this thing. There's so much meat in that article that reveals just how evil that stuff is. Mm-hmm. What the intent is. Yeah. It is a stossy state. Oh, yeah. On you. To control you. Control you. And lick your blood from your dying face. Okay. Next article. <laughs> <laughs> Next article. This really... Come on. Uh, Bert and Ernie are gay, says the writer. Hmm. But Sesame Street insists they're just non-sexual puppets. Yeah, they are. They are non-sexual puppets. But if they're simulating a gay couple, a little kid watching this, or even stupid adults watching this, don't know the difference. Mm Mm-mm. Just like they don't know the difference between uh, Ebo and Alexa and Google Home and Siri. Uh, So I I, I like the way Sesame Street tried to get away, uh, you know, around that. Oh, they're non-sexual puppets. They're just puppets. What are you talking about? Their characters are gay. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Uh, The true nature of Burton Ernie's very special friendship has been hotly debated ever since the uh, iconic children's show first aired in 1969. So Mm. in 69, what were they doing, Ms. Kapow, with programming? 
they were already programming all of us. Mm -hmm. Everybody who watched Sesame Street were already being programmed. Yep. It's amazing. They're not in a big hurry. I'm so glad I never watched that stuff. No. Mm -mm. Even though I've been accused of being, um, you know, the grouch. Was there a grouch? No, I don't know. I don't. So many are convinced the two lovable characters who shared a basement apartment, uh, but they slept in different beds, were gay lovers. Gosh, this is a sick world, man. It is. But you know what? It's it's already in all the Disney movies. Yep. You know, they, that's how they program your kids. And it's in the cartoons that kids watch. And, um, you know, those um, programs, mm -hmm. the, uh, what do you call it? The sitcoms and stuff. It's all in there. It's all there. It just cartoons started off. for kids, yeah. It just started off so innocent, so. I don't know because I don't watch children cartoons, but I happen to um, come across something on video, on the videos. And uh, they were saying that there was some kind of a uh, cartoon cartoon for kids i mean for little children and uh two of the female characters were actually getting get married and you had and they you saw them kissing oh boy a cartoon yeah for children a cartoon yep. i mean <sighs> programming television programming man well, this article goes on. It says, with their adorable bickering and easy chemistry, every TV series, now here's more programming. This is important. You know, there's a lot of stuff in this. TV series like Friends, mm -hmm. The Simpsons, The Family Guy, they all lovingly painted them as partners too. See? Mm -hmm. And you didn't even know it. You're sitting there watching Friends. You're watching Rachel and uh, what was his name, you know? Yeah. Uh, Rob or whatever the name. You know, Ross, Ross. Ross. You're watching Rachel and Ross uh, getting married or falling in love. You have no idea. Did you watch this show where they paint Bert and Ernie on there as loving part? And you, know, you have no idea because you're programmed. Mm -hmm. Could you let the one-eyed devil into your house to program you and your children and your grandchildren? The Baphomet. The Baphomet. The Baphomet has risen. It's an anti-Christ zeitgeist. Now, after decades of speculation, one of the show's writers, who's gay as a $2 bill, has lifted the lid on his most famous beloved characters. Mark Saltzman, mm -hmm. a Kabbalistic Jew who joined the Sesame Street in 1984, said he did indeed write Bern and Ernie as a gay couple. Mark Saltzman, a Kabbalistic Jew who wears a red thread on his wrist. Yeah. He told uh, the media that the characters reflected his own same-sex relationship with film editor Arnold Glassman at the time. Yep. See? Yeah. Saltzman, who was a script and songwriter on the show, said he wrote them as a loving couple. And the kids didn't know it. And the parents never knew it. He says, I remember one time as a preschooler in San Francisco, go figure. A little preschooler turned to, to her mother and asked, are Bert and Ernie lovers? And that coming from a preschooler was fun. This, mm -hmm. this is what he says. Instead of going, oh my God, they, they think my puppets are gay. Mm -hmm. I need to change something. No, he says it was fun. And he says, that got passed around and everyone had their chuckle and went back to it. He says, and I always felt that without a huge agenda. When I was writing Bert and Ernie, they were. I didn't have any other way to conceptualize them. Hmm. <gasps> wow. Yeah. But Sesame Street says, oh, no, that's not true. They're, they're just best friends. Uh, Sesame Street says they were created to teach preschoolers that people can be good friends with those who are very different from themselves. Even though they are identified as male characters and possess many human traits and characteristics, uh, they remain puppets and do not have a sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. I love the way they got around that. You know, oh, they're just yeah. puppet. No, we would never do that. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. A lot of people were upset. Uh, a lot of people were mad about this, but a lot of people were very, uh, you know, 
happy. They knew it all the time. They were happy it went out. So, uh, Mr. Saltzman has a nice little uh, little warm bench uh, for eternity in the lake of fire. So, uh, mm-hmm. welcome, Saltzman. Have a good time with your gay agenda um, and your propagandizing and programming, brainwashing children from 1969. Mm. Okay. Post Malone. Is that how you pronounce his name? Or is it Post Baloney? Baloney Baloney. What's wrong with this guy? Uh, he's he's cursed. cursed. Yeah. <laughs> he's cursed after messing with the most haunted object. Uh, see, there's one picture of him here. Uh, you got this, Miss Capel? Yes. He's doing the devil horns, right? Mm-hmm. He's got satanic tattoos yeah. all on his arm. He's sleeved. He's got skulls and Satan. You can tell he's a, he's a Satan smoker. And... Um, and he's doing the, the devil horn. He's got b- black fingernail polish. Mm-hmm. And uh, he loves Satan. Mm-hmm. Then there's another picture if you scroll down. And it's probably a more recent one. And he actually wow. has tattooed a crown of thorns on his forehead. Yep, where he didn't have it in the first one. No, he didn't have facial tattoos Mm-mm. on the first one. Now he has crown of thorn on the head, something over his eyes, some other crap on his cheek. And he has a black and white checkered uh, yep. sweater on mm-hmm. giving a victory sign drinking a Bud Light wow. um, and here's why this guy's an idiot well <laughs> I just explained to you but yeah here's you, here's more reasons why uh, I guess he's had some bad luck lately bad luck he said that there was a mid-air emergency saw his private jet making a landing without its wheels a couple of weeks ago and then he had a car crash. And uh, home invasion. He had a home invasion where gun-toting thieves yelled for the rapper. Apparently, they broke into his old house <laughs> mm-hmm. that he didn't live in anymore, and they were yelling for for him. Huh. I guess we're going to kill him. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. He did a video... And in the video, he says he might have messed with the wrong demon. So he was hanging out with this other... Uh, Ghost more, adventure guy. Yeah, Zach Bagans. Bagans. <laughs> These people have no idea what they're messing with. I mean, no. you know what I mean? No. Apparently, it's a haunted <sighs> museum. Yeah. So the rock star rapper, he was seen touching the shoulder of Zach, who was touching the object that is normally hidden behind protective glass. Well, and someone then, had to put it back there anyway, too. Yeah, exactly. Someone had to touch it. There's a picture of the uh, the demon box, too, the day box. Yeah, you notice it has, it's either Hebrew or Ara, Aramaic Mac, writing. Yeah. A bunch mm-hmm. of Kabbalists. Uh, they said, now we know why the glass is in place. Post is holding a beer, making it appear they're enjoying a low-key social hangout in the museum. Uh, and then that was right before they both fled the room. He ran. Yeah. Apparently, this post guy grabs Zach as the two of them run out of the room, perhaps knowing they have awoken a curse. <gasps> yeah. The object was the the Daibuk, Daibuk box. <gasps> mm. Daibuk is Yiddish. Okay, so I was right. It is Hebrew. It's Hebrew writing. It's Kabbalah. Daibuk is Yiddish for malicious spirit. The box inspired a horror flick, The Possession, hmm. which this writer says, which is totally cool. Mm-hmm. Really? Not. Mm. So it went down in June. Uh, they said that makes sense on the timeline of all his bad luck. Mm. They said uh, that Post Malone was touching the shoulder as Zach himself touched the box. They believe it was enough to trigger a curse. Yes. Anyway. Um, so he had a plane crash. It landed safely, obviously, but uh, almost didn't. He was involved in a car crash. And some people broke into his house holding guns. They demanded to see the rapper before taking off with 20 grand of jewelry and mobile phones. Mm. How many phones do you need? Both. Well, apparently you need a couple. Now, here's what he says. 
he says he took to Twitter with his thoughts on this. Do you think that Post Malone may have repented <laughs> and said, you know what? Maybe I'm maybe I need maybe I need Jesus to save my soul. Hmm. Maybe this whole Satan thing isn't working. No, you know what he said? He said, God must hate me laughing out loud. That or whatever inhibits that weird die book box. He meant inhabits, but you know how spell check is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So God must hate him laughing out loud. <laughs> laughing out loud. LOL. I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think he'll be doing a lot of laughing. He ain't going to be doing any laughing, Miss Pa. Mm-mm. Any laugh at Miss Kapow. One more story? One more. Hmm. Which one should we do? Which Let's one should we do? Let's do the one on the teenager accused of killing her class. Okay. These are the two grade, the, the two A students that they yeah, got I A's. I just find it very hard to believe. Yeah. But, well, they didn't kill their teacher, so they got A's. Uh, this is the reason why we're reading this story is. Um, it's crime, like a lot of crazy crime today, but it's just, you'll see the demonic um, influence on these people. These are teenagers, right? They're not even adults yet, teenagers. And she killed her classmate uh, at school, in class. Over a guy. Over a guy, yeah, that they had an argument about. But the but the thing why she killed her, she stabbed her death. She was smiling and laughing the whole time mm-hmm. during the... Uh, Ooh, that's sinister. That gives me chills. Yes. I don't like that. Gucci. A Michigan teen accused of fatally stabbing a classmate was smiling and laughing, according to reports. And two, two dozen students were there watching the horror. This gal was is 17 years old, and she killed... Another gal who was 16. That's With a per- kitchen knife of no, of all things. I guess you can bring a kitchen knife to school. You just can't, you can't bring, bring a, a gun. firearm. Yeah, but you can bring a knife because they're not banned. And this happened at Fitzgerald High School in Warren, Michigan, where you can get an A just for showing up and not killing your teacher. Mm-hmm. They say that witnesses said that the defendant was smiling and laughing as she was chasing the victim. Wow. And apparently she uh, stabbed her right in the heart. The prosecutor said that this, uh, the killer screamed, I'm going to kill her as a teacher tried to shove her out of the classroom. Mm -mm. And there was animosity between the two over a boy. Shimony. Yeah. And so when she went before the judge, the judge says, hey, you know. That you're being held without bail on a capital murder charge and that you could be facing life behind bars without parole? You know what she said? Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, those of you who want to uh, donate to a GoFundMe page for the victim's funeral, uh, there's a there's a link you can click there. I, for one, Man. will not be donating any cash. This kid has no idea. She's 17. You know, a life. A life term sentence is yeah. a long time at 17. Yeah, I guess she probably figures uh, she'll go there, do a couple of years, come out as 21 year well, old. They can't even think of what they're going to do tomorrow. No. They, and they don't think about consequences. Mm-mm. Just brain dead. Brain damaged humans. This, and then, obviously, for her to stab. Uh, another gal, a friend or acquaintance, stab, and then laugh and smile, chase her around the room while she's stabbing her, mm-hmm. knowing that you're going to kill her uh, at at age 17. Yeah. You, you don't just wake up one day without, you know, and go, hey, I think I'm going to yeah, kill this. Exactly. You know, you're demon possessed. Demon, totally demon possessed, totally zombified. It's a total demonic takeover. And it's been going on. This year's bad. Next year's going to be worse. And going on. It's not and getting better. And going on. That. Right, kids? Is it getting better? No. no. No, 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 no. Keep your eye on the earth changes. The climate changes. Not global warming. That's a farce. But you know what I mean. The climate changes. Stuff that is um, happening because it said it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Keep your eye on the strange things that are happening. Strange phenomena in the sky and on the earth. These are all harbingers. 
Yeah. They're all signs, right? So personally, I think that this Hurricane Florence uh, and also the other one, I can't pronounce its name, the Umbong that uh, hit the Philippines. Umbong. And, uh-huh. Umbong. Um, I think, you know, when you're looking at birth pangs, um, you know, you're looking for the budding of that tree and you're looking for these are birth pangs. I think, I think we're seeing the head of the baby. I think it's crowning. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just my personal opinion. I don't think you're just, these are no more just contractions. And then six months later, we'll have another contraction or a year later, we'll have some more dead birds fall out mm-hmm. of the sky in BB Arkansas. I think what you're seeing now is like the, the crowning of the head of the baby about to give birth. Mm-hmm. The woman in Travel is about to give birth. That's the earth's about ready to go. Boom. Get the, the earth is about to poop out the insidious human creatures that are inhabiting it. It's a, it's about to just, it's, it's taking a laxative and it's about to poop it all out. Okay. That's, that's, that's the only way I can describe it biblically. <laughs> all righty then. <laughs> that was, it's what came to me, Miss Capel. Okie dokie. It's right about to poop it out. All right. Poop it out. Poop it out. Okay. So right. uh, thank you for listening. And, yes, uh, everybody. Yeah, and it, I, I know I mean, you wouldn't be listening to this rant and raving unless your eyes were open to at least mm-hmm. a lot of these things. Um, just stay stay aware, take yeah. heed, take heed. Deceptions everywhere. Don't fall for it. Everything is a lie. Mm-hmm. Nothing's real on this this planet on this world. If it's not from God, it's not real. It's a lie. I mean everything. And everything that or the, the world wants to offer you is sinister. It's it wrong. is. It's, yeah. It's especially all stuff tr- that says it's for free or it's for your good. You know, you want to question this. It's a Trojan horse. Mm. Yeah. Just very, 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 very annoying. Because the world does not care about you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And, you know, just speaking, speaking of that, I mean, you know, maybe some of you are aware that there's a lot of people disappearing off YouTube and stuff. They're truthers. And not, they're not all just Christians, though there are some who are uh, doing Christian Bible teaching and things like that have been really restricted or... Or, or moved. Or removed. moved. And um, a lot of the people we're, we subscribe to are gone. Mm-hmm. Um, one guy we didn't subscribe to, but I know who he is an earth watchman guy, Dutch sense mm-hmm. um, came out and said, he's no longer going to be doing um, earthquake predictions, earthquake stuff. And he just says that the, the torment, basically the trolls, he goes, these weren't just regular people. He goes, I'm talking like the state department and mm-hmm. the national security <laughs> you know, yeah. people. He goes, the pressure was too much. He had to have a, 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 a conversation with his wife and says, it's just not worth it. Um, yeah, that doesn't make sense. No, you know what I mean? no. And one of the other guys we do watch, we did subscribe to into thin air. You've heard me talk about it. Oh, that was this really guy was putting one. out a video, at least a video every day, if not two or three. This guy was passionate about earth changes and he did a great job. Mm-hmm. Now he works, he works full time and he has a fiance. And right up to leading up to Florence, man, he was doing all the models and he was predicting where it was going. He was like right on. Thousands of people were depended on him for his information. Well, us, one of them. And, um, you know, he says, I'm going to be with you guys through this whole thing. You know, you, we're, we're going to guide you through it and tell you what areas, you know, all these. And here Florence hits and he's in the, he really is in the thin air. He's gone. Yeah. He's nowhere to be found. For not like one, four days. Yes. Four days. Not one single video. Totally weird. Then he finally comes back like nothing happened. And he just says, well, you know, I got real busy and I was at work and moving. I was moving and my phone. And I'm like, wow, that's just not, that's weird. Who are you? Mm-hmm. Strange. And there's a lot of, a lot of other ones that just say, hey, I'm not going to be doing this anymore. Or I'm not going to be doing this section anymore. Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, when you depend, a lot of these guys, they get big for their britches and they get thousands and thousands of subs. They start getting monetized and they get money. 
and the threat of that money leaving them, they'll compromise, unfortunately. Other times, um, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know why. But there are a lot of people disappearing from that. You know, as far as like Kapow Radio Show is, I, I pay for this platform. So it's not free. So I get nothing free. I pay for it. So they don't mess with whatever I say. The day they do, they don't get my money no more, right? So, you know, mm-hmm. it's 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 business. They want my money. And um, so it's a little different than when you're using free platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and all that other nonsense. They're free and nothing's free. It's like a Ebo the dog. They're all Trojan horses, man, to get information from you. Yeah. And, uh, but there are people disappearing left and right. You know, as far as like we're concerned, they don't need to disappear Kapow radio show. They just make us irrelevant. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, um, (laughs) they don't advertise us. They don't put us out there. You know, they, they bury our stats, you know, just like books and things like that. You know, just like the music we just did. Um, you know, I don't expect that music to go anywhere. Um, I did everything in my due diligence I can do to get it out, but I don't expect a whole lot of people to, to buy it or even listen to it because they'll bury it. Right. Um, I don't know if I told you guys the story that I went through the a distribution um, company to distribute all that music to online distributors. YouTube, owned by Google, is one of those online distributors. YouTube Music, right? Mm-hmm. And so, once again, I pay for these people to distribute all this stuff because you can't do it yourself. You have to have a distributor. So it's it, it costs money. So I, I pay for this, right? Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is like all the songs showed up on YouTube except all that's left now. And you can't find it anywhere. Yep. And so I go to the distributor. Everything's fine. It was loaded up. There's no problems. Nothing. YouTube just doesn't, just doesn't play it. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Now, I don't want to be some weird conspiracy thing or think that I'm bigger than, you know, or, you know, something I'm not because I'm nothing but it's just odd that that particular song that talks about a big rock of fire slamming into the earth and the earth ending is the one that just disappears well I circum I re I circumvented YouTube and just did my own videos on Mm -hmm. Mesquite Cafe channel and on Fifth Hook Media on those two channels which no one subscribes to or listens to (laughs) So I'm buried mm-hmm. anyway, but mm-hmm. I, but they're out there. So I said, screw right. you. I'm putting it up there anyway, whether you like it or not. And I did a video and put it up there. I put it on Facebook too, you know, and paid for advertising on that. Everything I paid for. So I don't get monetized. I don't make any money, you know, so uh, what they can do to me instead of threatening my money, they just make you irrelevant. Minim- marginalize you, minimize mm-hmm. you. Um, but I just thought it was—I just thought it was very odd that that through my distribution, all that's left now just can't be found on YouTube. I know that is so strange, <laughs> so strange. <laughs> and wh- what's interesting is that is that the people that are disappearing, there's some Bible people disappearing, but the people that are disappearing from YouTube are the Earth are the Earth uh, monitors, the mm-hmm. Earth watchmen. Those guys are the ones that are their channels are gone or they're no longer doing this segment or doing this. And you're like, what? Yeah. They've been compromised. They've been contacted. So I, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying there's could be something just like the sunspot observatory that closed. And if you believe that friggin' lie now, the, the FBI says, well, there was a pedophile janitor who was using a laptop with with poor kitty porn and so you they evacuated the whole thing don't cooperate with local law enforcement close the post office because a janitor looking at kitty porn i'm supposed <laughs> to believe that mm-hmm. they lie the fbi is nothing but a big lie machine i don't even know what they do or why they exist but this ain't for your benefit Mm-mm. so so i don't know what's going on and then you, i got these earth watchmen who've been compromised and they're like, well, you know, not all the observatories got slammed and wasn't alien. We don't know, you know, blah, blah, blah. you know, because they've been sold out. You know, it's, it's harder and harder to find truth, man. Yeah. You know, my my recommendation is you find people who aren't monetized. They don't make money off their channel. So they're not going to have thousands and thousands of subs. They might only have 300. But those are the ones you have to listen to because those those guys aren't being compromised. 
Yeah. You know, if you can find them because they're hidden everywhere, you know. Anyway, that's my friggin' rant. Right, Ms. Capel? That's right. That's right. Okay. Don't forget to listen to the Seed War Radio, Matt and Shailene Jacks on Podbean. Podbean. Yeah. They pay for it too. They're not monetized. So they're telling you the truth. Seed War Radio Podbean.com. I listen to them. So should you. <laughs> Okay. Good night, Ch- Miss Cabell. Good night. Ciao, babies. <laughs>